Hello again. Um, super excited to be up here again, um, uh, and uh, and very excited to be talking to you today. Um, and um, we are very very excited to be here, and very excited to be part of the foundation. Um, and and one of the things that I'm hoping that comes out of being part of the foundation is that we get to shine a light on just how much we're investing in supporting the FinOps community um, and all of, all of the FinOps practitioners who are here today. Um, we have hundreds of builders um, in my teams and across other teams, uh, product managers, we have large field teams, um, and, um, and we have many folks here this week. We have 12 product managers from my team um, who are around. Hopefully you've got a chance to talk to some of them. Um, and we have over a dozen folks from across AWS um, who are here this week. Um, and, and we're here to listen. We're here to learn. Um, you know, the, 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 the one single thing that has most impacted our roadmap over the last couple of years has been customers, has been talking to customers, understanding you know, what's a problem, what's an opportunity, what you're trying to get done, um, and, and why. Um, and then in multiple cases, we've taken that back. We've thrown plans away, and we've sat down, and we've revamped what we're doing or, or, or changed our priorities. So, so really, if you can, please you know, corner any one of us um, and you know, tell us what's, what's on your mind. Um, we also have um, some exciting announcements to share, which I'll get to. Um, uh, I hope you'll find them as exciting as I do. Um, but before I go there, you know, the, the way that we think about FinOps is FinOps is table stakes. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's no longer a matter of um, you know, um, uh, if, it's a matter of when. Um, you know, everybody has to do it. It's becoming increasingly important uh, for a bunch of different reasons. Um, and what's super interesting about this is it cuts across the entire business. Uh, you know, it touches uh, roles left, right, and center. Um, an increasingly diverse set of roles are getting pulled into this. Um, and that's been super exciting to be part of and, um, and enjoyable to watch. Um, and um, and you know, as, as a result of that, and to support that diverse set of different roles that, that are involved, we're making a number of different investments across our already broad product portfolio. Um, and, and we think about those investments through you know, a number of different lenses. Um, you know, we try to bring as much structure as we can so that we're thoughtful about where and how we're investing. Um, and today, I want to talk through some of the things that were done um, and some of the things that we're going to announce today. Um, and I'm going to look through three particular lenses. Um, and those lenses are trustworthiness, flexibility, and standardization. Um, and so let's talk about trustworthiness. Um, you know, I think, I think trust is a, is a super obvious one. Um, you know, and, and an easy place, a place where this is very critical to us, is cost optimization. Uh, if you can't trust our cost optimization recommendations, um, then, uh, then, then you're not going to use them. Um, and, um, and, and what I mean by trust them is not just that they're giving you the best you know, reduction in spend and that they're identifying where you have the biggest spend reduction opportunities, but that they are safe. You know, that, that if you apply those optimization recommendations, that we're not going to trade off security, performance, availability, any of those things. Um, and then you also have to trust that we're not leaving anything on the table. You know, that we're looking across your entire portfolio, that we're ident identifying all of the opportunities. Um, and, and we've made a number of investments that, you know, I think, uh, I think fall into the uh, into the trust lens. Uh, you know, one of those is we, we launched our cost optimization hub, which um, pulled together recommendations from across a number of, uh, of tools and services um, across AWS, because um, we have groups everywhere looking at this, um, uh, not, not just mine. Um, and, um, and then as part of that, we look through those and we try to deduplicate those, those savings opportunities so that um, you really know what you're actually going to get if you apply them. Um, and, and we allow you to sort and filter those in a way that makes sense for your business. Um, and um, transparency is a key part of trust. Um, you know, explaining how we're doing things, why we're doing things um, is super important. Um, and and one, of the, one of the investments that we made there was we've introduced visualizations so that you can see why we're making certain savings plan recommendations, what that's actually going to mean, so that you can, you, can, you can kind of sniff test them yourself and make sure that they, they make sense and you understand them. Uh, we also introduced a seven-day return window for savings plan purchases so that you can purchase with more confidence. Um, you know, it isn't this high stakes um, uh, you know, decision that you make. Um, I often joke that you know, uh, we, we built one of the most expensive buttons on the internet. Um, you know, and, um, and, and you want the confidence to know that if, if you make a mistake there or you want to come back and revisit that, uh, that you can do something about that. Um, and then um, 
uh, another area where we've, we've invested um, to give you peace of mind is we've given you the ability to customize your recommendations. So you can choose which recommendations you're going to see, so you're only focusing on the things that matter, um, and you can tune those recommendations. For example, you can set uh, customized CPU utilization targets so that the recommendations that we're making make sense for your workloads, your business, your risk tolerance. Um, and then finally, one, one of the areas where we build trust, which is probably least visible, is the amount of time that we spend with service teams behind the scenes, getting deep into what they're doing, working with their experts, to, to really think through how we get those cost optimizations that I talked about at the beginning right, um, and deliver cost optimizations that you can trust. Which brings me to my first announcement. Um, we spent over a year with our database teams working through how to bring safe, reliable, trustworthy recommendations, uh, optimization recommendations for RDS instances. Um, and those are available today. Um, uh, and, and they cover right sizing, they cover CPU architectures, they cover database engines, um, and idle resources. Um, and so those are available today um, uh, as GA for uh, our MySQL and PostgreSQL um, database engines. Flexibility. This one is super important. Um, and um, uh, the, the one thing that's really stood out from customer conversations over the last couple of years is just how different everybody is. Everybody's worrying about different things. Everybody's approaching this, this problem from a number of different angles. And there's a ton of diversity out there. And we want to support all of that. Um, you know, and and that, you know, that, that ranges from um, you know, the, um, the, the different individuals and the lenses that they're bringing to what they're doing, uh, but also you know, where you are on the maturity curve. Um, you know, um, uh, each of your businesses are in different places. Uh, you're in that crawl, walk, run phase, um, often along different dimensions in your business, and we have to support all of that. Um, and so, um, you know, in, in, the, in the spirit of flexibility, um, you know, one of the things that we launched um, last year was a new billing and cost management console, which allows you to uh, customize what you're actually seeing there. So again, if there are things that you know, are more important to your business, you can make them front and center, and if there are things that just don't apply or you don't need to look at, you can, you can hide them so that you're not distracted by a sea of data. Um, for those of you who want the flexibility to explore your, your, your costs using natural language interfaces, um, uh, we've made um, uh, support available in Amazon Q, which is our generative AI-powered assistant um, uh, for uh, querying uh, you know, about cost and usage data, billing data, um, and that is available in preview, um, and we are very, very excited to get feedback on that. I look forward to that. Uh, we spent a bunch of time really working through making sure that that was something that we were happy with. Um, we've also introduced the ability to, um, to allocate costs at a very fine granularity across some of our managed services, like EC, uh, ECS and EKS. Um, and, um, and we've introduced um, uh, uh, greater flexibility in Cost Explorer, uh, making uh, resource level data available across all AWS resources. Um, and then for coarser grain data, we've given you a look back of up to 38 months, so that if you want to look at long-term trends and use that to make decisions or understand something, you can. Um, and then we know that a lot of you, um, you know, want to get at data programmatically um, and, and use it outside of our consoles. Um, you know, our consoles are super important, but a lot of you have big pipelines and you want to get into the data yourselves, roll your sleeves up and go and understand it. Um, and, uh, and so one of the things that we uh, released at reInvent last year, which I'm super excited about, is uh, a new data exports platform. Um, and, and what this does is a couple of things. One is it gives you the ability to select the columns that you want in the data sets, to filter out the data that you don't want to see, um, you know, which means that you spend more time working on the data that you want to and less time figuring out how to get rid of the data that you're not interested in. Um, but more importantly, this positions us to start to offer additional data exports much more easily. Um, and, um, and so I'm super excited today to announce um, a new data export. Um, the cost optimization hub that I talked about earlier, all of those recommendations are now available as a data export uh, on our data export platform. And that includes information about which of, you know, where there might be overlapping cost optimization opportunities so that you don't have to do the heavy lifting to go and figure out which ones might, uh, might overlap. Um, I'm super excited that this is now available.
Okay, which brings me to standardization. Um, you know, we, we recognize that a lot of our customers, um, you know, spend a bunch of work and time and effort, um, you know, pulling data in, transforming it, moving it into, you know, um, uh, a common format so that you can understand and analyze and merge billing data across multiple uh, platforms. Um, and we know that that's time you'd rather not be spending there. Um, you know, it's, it's often costly. It's big data pipelines. Uh, you know, we understand that that's cumbersome. Um, and that's, that's why Focus was born. Focus, um, uh, you know, started because that is a problem that uh, the Philips Foundation uh, wanted to ha tackle head on. And we're super excited to be part of Focus. Um, and, um, you know, and, and we look forward to helping you wrangle all of that data, um, you know, and, and, and focus on the things that, that you want to. And so, I'm super excited to announce that available today, we have a preview release of an AWS Focus 1.0 data export. Um, and um, I'm going to jump to a video and show you how easy it is to set that up, because it is, uh, it is super easy. All right. So you should see a, a video showing up there. It's, so, so if you go to the data export uh, console page, um, and you create a new export, you give it a name, um, and you'll see that there is a focus 1.0 with AWS columns preview um, data export uh, table available. Um, you can choose that. You can go and look at uh, all of the columns that are available. We have um, you know, all of the um, 43 focus 1.0 columns are available, and we have five additional AWS specific columns. Uh, you can pick the format that you want it delivered in, um, and, uh, and you can tell us where you want it dropped. Give us an S3 bucket. Um, you know, we'll show you the resulting query, um, and then you set it up. Um, and within 24 hours, you'll have your Focus 1.0 compliant data export um, available to, to download and start playing with. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Check out more FinOps X 2024 content on our YouTube channel on the 2024 playlist. Support our channel by liking, subscribing, clicking the notification bell, and by leaving comments and questions for our speakers. We appreciate your support.